Why is it never sunny when I need to work on the van? Today's job I'm going to work on the insulation of the subfloor so at least I can turn the van around and do a lot of the cutting and prep work inside today. from the Scottish weather I can tell you about the next step for the van. So the next step is the subfloor. The subfloor is the area between sort of the habitation floor, the bit you walk on and your cabinets are fixed to, and the van's metal floor. And in my case it's also the first layer of insulation. So I'm going to be using PIR board and you see lots of van users using this and it gets called Kingspan and Celotex, those are just other brands of the same board. Um, I've just got a different brand which I've got for my local B&Q. I've gone for the 25mm thick stuff. Uh, it's got a silver foil on each side which means it's going to be waterproof and it's also a closed cell foam so any water which does get in it can't get into the foam itself. And then because this stuff doesn't take compression very well, so if you just put the boards on top of it for your floor you would uh, compress it over time. I've gone for 25mm by 38mm uh, battens uh, which is actually what's going to support the floor itself and I'll show you why I've gone for that height now. So when you have the battens lying flat on the van's ribs and then you lie this 25mm um, Celotex as well, they are perfectly level, which is what I want. However, if you lie the battens on their side and put the 38mm side uh, upwards, um, and you put those on the base of the van, not on the ribs, that also is generally about a millimetre within the level of this as well. So that works quite well where there are areas that aren't um, going to be ribs in the van. In my case, uh, the battens are 25 by 38mm, but they sort of work out at about 36 mil, well that's fine for, for what I need. Um, the reason they're blue is it's probably got some sort of a treatment applied to it but it's got no correlation to the reason I'm picking for the van, they're just it's the exact size I wanted. So let's crack on and get chopping. pieces cut out so now it's time to lay them out and make sure it all fits. So that is the subfloor battens down. Uh, the next job is I need to trim some of the bottoms of the battens off. Where I put pot rivets in the past to fill those holes in the floor. Those are sitting a little bit proud above the actual rails themselves. So I'm going to need to go mark those off and trim little bits out the bottom of the batten so all the batten sit perfectly flat on the rails. After that, it'll be gluing them down. So the layout I've gone for is supporting the important areas. Uh, over by the door there is where the shower is going to be, so I want some extra support on the floor over there. And a lot of the beams running this way are supporting the very high traffic areas of the vehicle or supporting the areas of where my cupboards are going to come up to where I'll be fixing to the floor. Uh, and then a lot of the crossways ones are where the uh, plywood seams are in the actual floor I'm going to use and then I can screw on both sides of those and really clamp it down. The car with the pot rivets I use sit proud on the metal rails. The battens are not able to sit flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in the pot rivets with a Sharpie and then I'm going to put the batten back at its place, line it up, put some pressure on it to hopefully then transfer some of that Sharpie ink back to the areas I then need to drill out. I'm then going to use a countersunk drill bit just to remove those areas. And now they sit a lot more better on the rails.
Right, well, that's all the little raises taken down. I've got to give the van another clean now just because it's filled with wood chips and after that I can start gluing these pieces down. This is a totally acceptable method for cleaning the van out, hair dryer and extension lead. Right, let's see if that's enough for now. Right, so the next job is to glue down all of the battens. Uh, and I'm gonna use CT1, which is a adhesive. To be honest, it was just came kind of recommended on this sort of self-build camper forums on Facebook, so I'm gonna use that. I think the main reason it's probably used is because it still remains flexible when it's dry and since it's going to be a vehicle there is going to be that flexing in it so you want the sealant to sort of stay well flexible otherwise if it went rock solid it would crack and then you wouldn't have your batten stuck down anymore so what I'm going to do put down all the battens and then I'm going to start using those concrete slabs to weigh down just put a lot of pressure and leave that to cure for 24 or 48 hours Dog Baxter. Right, that should be all of the main buttons now. I've got a few extra little ones I need to glue down, but I might just use some house bricks to weight those down, put a few other bits and bobs in a few places. So I've left the adhesive to cure for 24 hours. And uh, now it's time to unload all of the concrete blocks. However, from yesterday it's now been pointed out to me that I do in fact own a van and I could just drive the van filled with concrete blocks up to the top to unload them opposed to doing them individually like I did yesterday. I think anyone noticed I borrowed those bricks from the construction site. So I just need to give the van a bit of a clean again, ready to move on to the next step. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the finish. I just put some of the paper on it just to protect some of the joints from where I was putting bricks in it if there's any glue overspill. But it all seems really quite sturdy. Happy with that. And most importantly, Level. So the next step is to now start cutting this uh, PIR insulation board and fitting it into all those gaps between the battens.
some craft foam wasn't working very well, I'm going to use a saw instead. So that's all the insulation board cut and fit between the buttons. It's taken a lot longer than I thought. Um, the next step is to do this, is to full tape it all. So the insulation board itself with its uh, foil layer on top is going to be waterproof. The gaps and where the buttons are aren't, so we're going to put aluminium foil tape all over. And what that's going to do is that's going to make us a nice continuous vapour barrier all the way across the floor. That's the vapor barrier done and all the floor sealed off. And then when we do the walls and the ceiling, those vapor barriers on those as well, it's going to continue and meet down. So the entirety of the vehicle will be sort of sealed. And the reason a vapor barrier is important is just for the moisture gets in the air from you breathing. You don't want that sort of moisture in the air to get into the insulation or into the metalwork because that's going to stay there and it might start rusting. So if you sealed off the entirety of the vehicle's metalwork from that moist air and it can only kind of go in and out those the doors, vents and the windows, then you're going to stop your um, insulation prints you're getting wet. So that's enough for today and tomorrow the job will be to put the plywood floor down. Well that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, we've got the insulation in, we've got the battens in, it took a lot longer than I thought and it was a lot messier. Um, next episode I'm going to be putting back in the old 18mm plywood floor, I'm going to do some repairs to it uh, and I've also got to lay some of the water system piping which is going to go underneath the flooring but around this and I have to cut a few chunks out of this again and a few little conduit piping as well for the electrics I need to move. Um, but that's it for this episode, thanks and I'll see you next time. Oh don't forget to su subscribe.